Birdwin, and today we are talking about Storyboard Pro, but more specifically, the best way to create thumbnails in the software. So, whenever you do a storyboard, do you make thumbnails before you get started? Um, if you don't, I'm here to tell you that you should. Like, you might think that starting a storyboard right off from, like, of a board and just making one drawing after the other might be the best thing. It's not. The best thing is to have a wow! thumbnailing page. Because in thumbnailing page, you can quickly just sketch and try and do a bunch of things. And the fun thing with thumbnails is that, you know, they're tiny and you see like your whole board from a distance. So when you work, you don't waste time making a drawing very pretty only to throw it away if you don't need this specific frame, okay? So I'm not gonna spend five hours gushing about thumbnails. I mean, I will, but in another video, not in this one, because this one is specifically about a very freaking amazing feature called the thumbnailing page. So that's what we're gonna see today together. So the thumbnailing page is one of the features that I'm the most proud of in Storybook Pro and Harmony because I was involved a lot in its conception and how it behaves and stuff. So if you have any feedback about that feature, I will be very happy to hear it. So this whole feature came in because a lot of artists who do storyboards do thumbnails. And we do thumbnails either in the software or on paper. So when I work on paper, I usually just, you know, do it all in my sketchbook. But back when I would do my storyboards in Storyboard Pro, I would usually like have the page here and I would go either in the page or on the side and I would take one of the cool stamps I made like ages ago that would allow me to do like an HD grid and I would just like paste these around and just use them to do my thumbnails. But the problem is that once you do this, uh, when you try to like put them into your storyboard, then you need to take them, copy and paste them, and like make sure that they are scaled the right way. And there was many ways to do it, but each of these ways was very time consuming. It was still time efficient because thumbnails are a great thing to do and they do save you time on the long run. But yeah, this whole process was kind of tedious. And you know, I was working at the office and the rest of the devs at work saw this and you know they've been aware that thumbnails is a thing that a lot of artists wants to do so now we have like a long conversation about what what it could be and a couple months later the dev were like yo check this out and they called me and they showed me this cool amazing page that would allow you to like draw in it and then in one click this would then get transformed into a bunch of panels or scene that's the feature now let's dive in and learn how to use it so this is the thumbnail page I did for my latest contract from Game Grumps, where I'm gonna animate them as rats again. Yeah, this is actual real footage that I use professionally, so I'm not making shit up when I say that thumbnails are amazing. And it's nice because while you can draw into the frame, we also made sure to leave some room at the top so that you could write whatever you need. And also you can change the order of these little panels and stuff, so yeah, I'm excited and let's dive in. First, how do you create a thumbnailing page? Super easy, you head over to Storyboard, New, and then you find new thumbnailing page. And this is gonna give you a page. Then to edit that page, you can go to panel, and then, you know, you can give it a name, so I'm gonna give it my, uh, I'm gonna call it like, um, zero one. Then in here, you can change the layout. You can go from one <laughs> to six. You can change the spacing between the, each frame. We left it at six by default, but you can change it to two if you don't like to have space. If you wanna have more space, you can also make it larger. But you have to understand that while the frame of the panel or, or scene like is here, you kind of have to imagine that it kind of goes like halfway through each of them. Because like I said, if you write around it, you have about the spacing of like half and half. So that's how it kind of calculates it. So if this is your frame, then it actually takes in more around the frame so that when you export it to panels and scenes, it all works out. You can also set the new things to your own default if you don't like the one that we made. So for this tutorial, I'm just gonna go back to 4.4 four because I thought this was perfect for the screen. Then the ordering, you can change it because at first it was left to right. And then I was like, I like to board from top to bottom. So yeah, they made this super flexible now. So you can go either from left to right. There's other choices like top to bottom, then right, top to bottom, then left. So I usually go top to bottom, then right. And then, you know, you would just get started. There's also this section, but I'm gonna show you in a minute. Then you can just start to draw and you can use as many layers as you want. So I can have like a maybe uh, my, my character A here. Um, oops. So I can have character A here um, being drawn very fast. And then in the other scene, maybe he's gonna like open his mouth and uh, have tongue, I don't know. Like, I don't know what's going on in that scene. And then you can just make your thumbnails like this. And the great thing is that you can have all your thumbnails show up, but you know when we try out things, maybe 
I'm like, oh, do I want this scene or not, like this one? So the great thing is that instead of having to erase something and commit, you can also temporarily like hide them with an X, being like, I'm not sure about that one. And that's why you have these little eyes here. But the second reason why this thing is amazing is because if you look at my little thumbnails here, if I am in my stage view or my camera view, it will behave a different way. So in my stage view, if I'm not moving in my timeline, I see all my panels from afar. But if I go in my timeline and I take my little needle here and I move it by click and dragging, see, I'm playing my thumbnails as they go. And when I release, I go back to my view. In the camera view, on the opposite, it's you see where you are. And if you move with the little needle, you can see your panels. But even if you release, uh, it'll stay there. So that's the difference between the camera and the stage view. It's up to you to use the one that you prefer. But then these little eyes. So here, if you look, um, if I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this scene, this panel, so panel 14, I can close the eyes on it. So then when I go through my panels, if I look here, it says 12, 13, and 15. So it's gonna skip the one that you hit so that you can try many different scenarios and different things. That's why you have these little eyes here and that's why it's better to use the timeline when working with the thumbnails. It's very great because the thumbnails are important because you work in small format. You don't have the opportunity really to go and put a lot of details into your work. But I do understand that it's very great to be able to also play them. And for those of you who say that it's a time waster or cheating, just so you know, when, even with, when we would do thumbnails, a lot of people would then zoom in and scroll around to tell their story. So it's, it's just more convenient. And then when you're done with your thumbnailing page, all you have to do is either go here to convert to panel or because I requested it, you can also right click and you're gonna find here convert thumbnailing page. Hey, that's amazing. So then when you click on it, you can choose to have it either be panels or scene. Though, before you do this, I always recommend to right-click on your thumbnailing page and make a duplicate. Well, it says duplicate panel, but you know, it's gonna do the same. So I duplicate my thumbnailing page and after that I convert it to panel because then it gives me like a little backup. So that's why you see here I have my final storyboard and I have my thumbnailing page here at the end because sometimes it can be useful. And then you convert your thumbnailing page and you can choose either panels or scene. And so I'm gonna choose panels here. And when I'm done with this, it might take a while if you have like a lot of thumbnails. <laughs> like this. Da -da -da -da. And you have your panels and then you can just go time them. Um, and it's pretty nice. The last thing I want to show is that you don't have, like I said, you don't have to work from storyboard. I do know that I prefer to thumbnail sometimes like when I'm in transit or when I'm outside, like in the sun or something. So what you can do is you can make yourself a blank thumbnailing page of the format that you want. And then you can go to file, export layout, and you can export this like as a JPEG. So that, that's what I did. Like I have it into my files here as a little JPEG. And you can make your sketches in any software that you want. And then all you have to do is just import the image. So import image as layer. And then of course mine is gonna have nothing in it, but you know, I could just have uh, drawn these in another software. And then when you import it, you can just take your drawing. You know, it takes a little second to just reposition it, but because it's the same format, once you set it there, uh, you can just use what you drew in another software and still use the feature to export them inside your software. So yeah, I really, really hope you enjoyed this feature and I am so proud of this feature because this is a great collaboration between artists and devs working really close by taking feedback and making this tool for you guys. So I really hope that um, you will love it. Like we were very blessed to have a lot of feedback about it and experience, so. Yeah, I really hope you like it. You know, it's the first iteration of it. I'm pretty sure there's so much more we can add to make everybody's life a lot easier. And uh, yeah, I will see you again next week for another video. <laughs> Goodbye.